Hello, Terry. Thank you uh, very much for joining the uh, the talk uh, tonight with me and uh, sharing your story with the audience here in Vietnam. I really appreciate your time and uh, joining with us. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you for for talking to me today. <laughs> yes, I I really appreciate um, uh, Courtney. She's uh, referred you to uh, uh, you know me to talk to you. And uh, as I share with you, we are in the bad situation for COVID uh, in Vietnam and in other regions also. And uh, I think um, if we can do something to inspire people, build hopes for the people, and then something in the discussion today, if uh, anybody who listen to it can learn an, a point or two from here, that would be wonderful already. So I and I'm really looking forward to this conversation with you. I couldn't agree with you anymore, Ha. Huh? I think it's a, a wonderful idea, and I'm so happy that you reached out to me and that Courtney recommended me. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think to 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 start, uh, can you do a uh, quick introduction about who you are and what you've been doing? Absolutely. So uh, my name is Terry Lewis, and I am currently the Chief Human Resources Officer for a company in the United States uh, called One Call. And uniquely, I started this job in the middle of the pandemic. And so what I have to say there is, you know, there are good things that happen. Um, I took a promotion and I've gotten to know a whole new group of people in this time period and really helping a company uh, deal with the problems that are happening and find its way forward. Um, before that, I have been in human resources for about 25 years now. And uh, I spent the last uh, you know, seven or eight years traveling uh, the whole world, really. I was with one of the ADECO group divisions called Pontoon uh, for a little over seven years. And uh, I got to see all over Asia and all over Europe and various parts of North and South America as well. And it was absolutely wonderful. And the thing that I walked away from that experience with was that we are so much more alike than we are different. Everywhere that I went, I found people that wanted to be able to take care of their families, give back mm -hmm. to their communities, and everybody gets up in the morning saying, I want to go do a good job and, and be proud, be proud of my work, be proud of my family and where I'm from. And uh, I found friendly, wonderful people everywhere I was able to travel. People even opened their homes to me to share a meal, to meet their families. Mm -hmm. um, if I was there for a weekend, people would want to come meet me to take me to see the beautiful parts of, of where they lived. Um, and, you know, it's something that I've kept with me now that I don't travel because of COVID. Uh, I've kept with me that, that there is hope and there are people out there that are just so welcoming and so ready for us to get back to some version of normal and that we are resilient and that together we can get through this. Mm, yes, yes. Thank you for sharing the wonderful story. I think that... Uh... Uh, Connie also shared in her talks that um, people always wanted to do their best. Uh, yes. You know, always wanted to be the best and be helpful to other people. So that's the root of all human beings that we are. So the next time if I have a chance to see you in my country, definitely, you know, we will welcome you to our home. We invite you to our I family. can't wait. <laughs> and if you get here, if you come to the United States, I will do the same. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, Terry, I'll, I'll continue with the conversation that we are. Um, 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 one of the things that when I look back at, uh, at what you do is um, you spend almost your year, uh, you know, yeah, in uh, 25, 38 years uh, in the human resource industry. And then you also study human resource when you were in did. university. And that's odd to me because over 100 people that I've been talking uh, in the past three, four weeks, only two of them actually study the same major. Wow. Yeah. One is Ian Grindy. He's in the other co-group running the international marketing. So Ian Grindy study international marketing. Then he worked in the international marketing. Another mm -hmm. gentleman is from France, but he's been based in Vietnam. He study uh, supply chain. Then he worked for Kunia uh, Nego as a country manager here in this country for the sales mm -hmm. marketing. And he also, like you are. So... Uh, why did you pick the human resource industry at the beginning? Yes, It's an interesting thing. Um, I thought I was going to go to law school and be an mm. employment lawyer. So yeah. I thought that I would be focused on employment law. And in many ways, I do have employment law as a part of my job. 
but what I realized, I finished four years of university and I did uh, work experience while I was in school and mm. uh, made the decision that I really liked the work and I really didn't want to go memorize all the legal books. And so employment law and human resources in the background led me to get a, a, a graduate degree, a master's degree instead, specifically mm. in human resources so that I could, instead of law school, go into an HR career. So a combination of the coursework I did at university, my, my school did not have a legal uh, major. So I had to pick something so that I would be prepared for law school. And I picked the human resources area to get me ready. But then I decided not to go to law school and instead to continue in human resources. So it was a little bit of what I call a happy accident. Happy accident. That's what yeah. you call it, right? <laughs> I noted out that uh, it's a happy accident that you, uh, you know, study human resources. But for the 25 years in this industry, and I believe there's more years coming. Uh, also. There are, yeah. Yes. What besides seeing great people, besides traveling the world and besides working for great organizations, what else this industry has been giving you that makes you happy? I would tell you that in human resources, you have such a unique opportunity to see the whole business. There are very few functions that really do partner with marketing, with operations, with legal, um, with sales, with the customer service centers, right? We literally have to partner with every piece of the business to help them put their strategy together. And in the businesses I've worked in, we achieve through people, service businesses, your main product, your main competitive advantage is your people and the way that they treat your clients and the way that they're trained to take care of business for you. And being in human resources, I think, just gives you that unique view of the whole business from the beginning to the end. And mm -hmm. you get to know so many different people. And I have met people that are literally rocket scientists and they're wonderful. Mm. And I have met people that, you know, own their own janitorial firms and, and clean buildings. And the spirit of the human comes through from everybody. And, and to mm. your point earlier, Courtney said that everyone goes to work to do their best. I really, really mm. believe that. And so, you know, I would say being in human resources for me, I do what I love. Um, because I did tell you I, I was interested in employment and employment law and that whole body of work. But mm. the way that my career has developed, I do what I love in ways that I never thought that I would. Um, I've gotten mm. to understand the profit and loss statement of a business. I've gotten to understand truly how a business works and delivers. I go to client meetings and I talk about our company and about our people and how they deliver what we deliver. Um, and I really think that at least for me, for the way that my brain works and for the things that make me feel satisfied and like I've achieved something, this has been the perfect career. And, and I would like to keep doing it for at least another 10 years or so. <laughs> or maybe more than 10 years, right? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe, you know, at some point you have to retire and have some fun, but. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, in your line of work, I'm amazed at how we, um, you have a chance to meet a lot of uh, great leaders all over the world, right? And we we in the uh, we in the competition to retain talent, to attract talents in every company, in every part of the world. What do you uh, you know in your experience? How do leaders uh, looking onto talent? What are they looking for to bring these people onto their organizations? I think that you can um, hire people that have the right mindset and the right culture fit, mm. and you can teach them a whole lot of different skills. There yeah. are some jobs, and I'll you know be very honest when I talk to candidates and when I talk to employees, there are some roles that absolutely require a certain level of knowledge and past work in that field. But there are many, many roles that you can teach people that have the right level of intelligence and desire to do a good job. And I really, really believe in that. And hiring someone who is a good cultural fit for your organization and your organization is a good cultural fit for them is really important. And then the other thing that I think is also so important, Ha, is that 
the manager has to stay involved with their employees. HR isn't the reason that people quit to go to work someplace else. You know, mm-hmm. they leave if they don't see their manager getting to know them, uh, getting involved with their career, helping them mm-hmm. understand what they do well and what they need to learn more about to do better and having that relationship. And one of the things that we've done um, at my company this year is we rolled out an updated version of our core values. And as a part of that, we've done hour long sessions similar to this, where um, we're teaching people about the core value and we're doing some exercises about how their work and what they do really does be a big part of our core values and who we are as a company. And it would have been really easy for my HR business partners and for our trainers to do that with all of our employees. But we didn't do that. We turn that into an opportunity to train our managers how to deliver this and get to know their people and engage with their people because we're still working primarily remote and you don't see your people every day. And it allowed this conversation to happen about how you are so important to what we do at this company and how you fit into our core values and really great, wonderful conversations that help our people understand how important they are. And it's coming right from the people that they directly work for. Mm. Is it the first time they experienced this kind of exercise? It is. How did that transform them? You know, I would say it was at the beginning, everybody was a little bit nervous. I think, you know, mm. we um, we have managers that aren't used to delivering this kind of content to their people. Mm. So we did uh, these train the trainer sessions where we literally practiced with them and the training team, the HR business partners tra- practiced with them how to deliver the content. And um, immediately after they started giving these sessions, we were getting feedback. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Not only am I getting to understand my people better, but I also understand where the company is headed better because I'm engaging in this material and getting to know all of this information about our organization and the core values and the behaviors and the reasons that we are doing the things that we're doing. So I think it was a little bit nervous at first. And then once everybody got going, they really, really enjoyed it. Well, I think it's a it's a very good experience for everybody who involved into this because uh, in my life of work we always receive you know the corporate send out information about the core values or whatever it is and then we got uh, you know the uh, induction of that but not really leaving with the core values and and then I think this is can be the practice that I can train the team moving forward you know if they do it they can be the one who uh, you know, trans and transfer the core value at the management Absolutely. The team. Well, yes, and I'm definitely. happy to share any of our information with you if it would be helpful for you. I can, we have learner guides and all kinds of things that I'm happy to oh, share with you. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, my, my next question is related to the HR industry because um, it's a beautiful industry and I believe that's a lot of uh, young people that, you know, when they graduate, they want to get into this industry, right? And what they do is like um, they will look up at individual who are successful in the career, like you are, but in the in the in the uh, in the um, in in this field, and then they uh, they want advice from you. So, if uh, if the people want to be successful in human resource industry, what skill do they need to uh, to learn, unlearn, yeah. or learn faster? You know, what is that that they that they need to prepare? That's a great question, huh? I would say that there are two things for me that are really, really important. You have to be curious. You have to be want want to learn things, be curious, and really want to learn about different things in order to be successful in human resources. And Mm -hmm. you also have to be what I call uh, flexible. And so many, many things... um, don't just have a yes or a no answer. You know, we use a mm-hmm. phrase in the United States that we say it's not just black or white. It's not just purple or pink, right? It's it's not just one thing. And in human resources, one of the most critical things that you have to be able to do is be curious about the situation, research the situation, and really find out what's happening in the middle in order mm-hmm. to come with a solution that's going to help everyone that was involved in that situation. And so that then comes into the not, it's not yes or no, 
Um, mm -hmm. There are, there are. don't get me wrong, many things that are very rule-based. You know, you have to come to work every day and you have to do your work and you have to be on time and, you know, you can't steal from the company and those sorts of things, right? Those are, mm -hmm. those are the black and white issues, the yes or no mm -hmm. issues. But other things, when people aren't getting along or when a project isn't going in the right direction, to really get to the root cause of that when there are human beings involved, there are always going to be as many versions of the truth as there are people mm. involved in a situation. And then mm. the real truth, which is a combination of all that beautiful people working together. And so curiosity and the ability to learn mm. and the ability to find common ground uh, when you're working through a difficult situation, I think are really, really critical skills for anybody in human resources. Mm. So, like, so being curious and the ability to, to learn new things, and at the same time, the ability to be flexible and, you know, finding the common ground and everything. Uh, yeah. At the, two, at the two skills that you think that is very important for this human resource industry. Absolutely. So, we lead me to the last question, and Terry, uh, that would be related to, uh, to you, for your own success. Yes. Uh, I'm curious to know, you know, if you can summarize your success in a few keywords, what would that, these keywords be? Absolutely. In my career, I have never been afraid to ask for what I thought I needed. So yeah. what do I mean by that? I mean that many years ago when I got married and then had a child, I wanted a couple of years where I didn't travel. My job mm. had a lot of travel in it. I went to my leader and I said, for two years, what can we do so that I don't travel so much and I can be home more with my baby? And mm. we worked it out. And I took a different role for those two years and I was home more with my baby. And once my mm. baby got older, I said, okay, I'm ready to travel now. And they said, okay. And I went into another position that had the travel in it again. And then Another time I wanted to learn more about the business I was in and there was a position coming available because someone had to take a medical leave of absence for three months. And I said, I'll mm. still be human resources manager, but I also want to be the department leader for that shift because I mm. want to learn how to do that work. And mm. so this is more than a few words, but I think one of the keys to my success um, humbly has always been that I have said, please let me learn more. Please let me mm. learn how distribution works. Let me learn how our clients work. Even when I was at the pontoon brand of Adeco, there was a mm. period of time where um, we had a, a, a team called the mid-market team and we were in between leaders and we were recruiting for a new leader. And I said, I'd like to do it. Can I own those mm. accounts while we have this job open? And I ran um, about 12 small accounts. They were small, but I was also mm. the pontoon HR leader for that time period. Mm. So leaning into those opportunities to learn more about the business is always going to make you more intelligent and more valuable to your company. Ah, so, so you summarize your success is because of the ability that for you to, uh, to ask, uh, to ask be involved and then do more than what you had to originally, you can learn and add more values back to the organization. Yes. That's, uh, yes. Thank you very much. I talked to, uh, uh, before you, I talked to one uh, one of the expert in recruitment in Vietnam market. Yes, and then she's also shared that uh, the word there. You know, normally the people we always do what they are told to do, uh, or you know what the job roles are basically uh, telling them what to do. But then if you go beyond it, required dairy. So it means that you like you what you are there and doing. You ask your line manager yes. uh, what can you do to get there and you know what you want or what can you do to add more values to the organization. So thank you for sharing that uh, uh, story and the reason. And then uh, I really appreciate it. There's a lot in here that um, that I and the people who listen to this. Uh, we reflect on what we've been doing. Are we daring enough? <laughs> Are we doing more than what we could do to the organization, to the development of ourselves? Um, and the people around us also, right? So, uh, Terry, I, I really thank you for, for all the time you share with us and all, everything that we had for this evening, all right? Thank you. And and I would say to the people listening to this, um, if they would like to reach out to me on LinkedIn, I am happy to connect with anyone who I can maybe help along the way. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank and, you. Uh, 
yes, stay healthy, be safe, and uh, when you I too, we will we'll meet. Okay. Yes, we will. You too. Thank you, Ha. Bye bye. Bye bye.